Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Big Money Stylist Podcast. I'm Danielle, and this is Ani Rivera. Hello! Hello! <laughs> and you look all cute today, and I look like a bum once again. Well, I'm walking into filming next, so I have to oh, okay. do something. I, we do the, the podcast on Fridays, which is like kind of my day off, and I always come like straight from the gym. This is like another side um, of me. Why are we opposite colors today, though? I don't know. Look you know what's you know so funny? I have my MBR um, little crop tee on, and I walk in, and me and Katie are literally dressed in the same thing. <laughs> She's like, hold on, I don't have a hat, but I feel like when you're so busy do you not put on the same shit every day i have a drawer of Of no less than 40 yes work tees yes and this my same favorite like five Mm -hmm. pairs of pants yes i have (laughs) i had my cleaner actually organize a drawer of just mbr tees and i am like a shopaholic and i love clothes so much and every day i'm like what mbr tee do i want to (laughs) wear i'm like why do i even shop like (laughs) these are they're actually free tees for us because we're in the company but yes i'm the same way but you know what do you know what they say they actually say that producers do that because we can't can't spend any time thinking yes because instead of going through and spending an hour being like do I look better in this or do I look better in this we're just like okay get up put a work tee on put like my normal all black and yeah. then walk out the fucking door to actually go yeah. through and do some shit I know but I it'd be fun you know what? actually never mind I was gonna say even if somebody laid out an outfit and was like Danielle wear this I'd be like no <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think about anything but putting on my cute little MBR tee so you know what I'm fucking stoked to wear what? The Christmas dress I got, I got in the mail. Ooh, oh, I ordered the little, um, the Ooh. feathery one. Girl, I don't know yeah. how fancy we were supposed to get, but I'm going real fancy. Nice. <laughs> well, you know, just make sure we keep our masks on and take it off only between bites between food. <laughs> As we sit in the podcast studio. <laughs> oh. oh, welcome to California. <clears throat> All right. Hey, hey we what finished, do we talk about? Dude, we just finished a massive wow. round of fucking events. I do. You know what? Maybe that's why I'm a little bit loopy today. Like, <gasps> oh my God, I had an ads call and finally I started talking and I go, I'm so sorry. Hold on. I literally went. Like your <clears throat> brain like is like, I feel like my brain is not, usually I'm pretty like witty and pretty quick and I'm like, there, it's a little something. There's a lag happening today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lag happening today. Oh, yeah. But, but we just finished um, a round of five events, two filming days, two more training events are all in two and a half weeks. Yeah. So we had like back to back classes. We had model preps on the weekend. But you know what? It's because normally we do our larger convention. Yeah. We sold it like halfway out. And I was like, we're not going to be able to reopen in this fall. And so we were like, well, we, we have a training facility. We're like, well, let's break it down into small classes of like 20 to 25. And it was just like class mayhem. But it was so funny. I actually miss because I had only really been involved in like the bigger events. Yeah. And I really miss those small events and like connecting with the students on that level. And it like it was almost good because it reminded me why I love what I do so much and the, the connection there. Not that the connection's not there in a big event, mm-hmm. but it's just different when it's a smaller class. Well, and I feel like because I've been involved in like so many literally since I stepped foot here three mm-hmm. some years ago that that's why like it's like that fire that passion never leaves because mm-hmm. I see the students I talk to them they're like oh my god look at what's happened mm-hmm. look at what's done like I'm so excited even one of the girls in the class who was talking about our last one who's talking about like the really bad breakup she's going through she ended up dming me and we went back and forth a little bit and I'm like hey you just need to remember like your value and your worth is not in a fucking relationship yeah like your value and your worth comes from yourself right and I'm like and I know it's a really hard place to be in like I get it I've been there But also you stand in a really beautiful place now to create whatever the fuck it is you want and you hold yourself to that standard and you hold your next partner to that standard. I'm like, and you get to build a life that you want and a life that can't be taken from you because you fucking built it. Well, and I think too, like sometimes whether it's a work relationship or a personal relationship, it's like even in my personal relationship with Garrett, like there were so many years where I'm like, I can't keep, like we were just like in totally opposite directions. And I'm like, I want to make this work, but we're both going to have to like ravine back into the middle and then work on it together Mm -hmm. and it took us probably like a solid four years like to to where I felt like I'm like hey I kind of like you again (laughs) I mean I actually remember you guys when I started Mm -hmm. as a student in 2016 versus now Mm -hmm. and I feel like I can see the progression you guys made but I also feel a lot of that came from two different things of both of you being like because you came from like such a dark place of being like you know what Garrett I'm not gonna fucking save you you want to be some weirdo who runs and you're like negative three pounds you fucking do that (laughs) And then you were like, and you know what? You're not going to save me either. Like, I'm going to have to fucking produce for myself. And then from there, you both realized, like, you both had to rise and level up. And then communication. Well, I think that was the thing is I... I always was like waiting for Garrett to take care of me, right? Yeah. And then I was like, he can't, I, I got to this place where I'm like, I don't even know, he's like in a dark place, he can't even take care of himself. And I have these moments in my life where I always say it's like my higher self, my higher version is like whatever. And I remember in this moment, like there's been several moments in my life and I was like, like a clear voice was like, Danielle, it's not him, 
it's you. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, and I took that as like, you can create whatever you want. You're in charge of your own success. You're in charge of the people you surround yourself. Like, it's on you. And I was like, okay. And when I when I felt that, I was like, all right, okay, well, how can I how can I become the best version of me? What do I need to do? Like, how does this work? And I kind of felt like in my relationship specifically with my husband, it's like we were married, but I was just really working on me. And, yeah. and then he was kind of working on him, and then we kind of had to work on our relationship together. But you know what? I also feel that that is a really strong indication of a good relationship. Like, yeah. you know, I know at the time it wasn't great, but I also think that for a relationship to be successful, a personal one, you have to have your shit, mm-hmm. he has to have his shit, and then right. you have shit together. Right. Because it, if not, it does become a like, well, let me drag you with me, and let me drag you, or and let's like do... even like codependency, like, like whether it's I, in business girl, or... Yeah, I know. I don't do codependency. I don't either and I'm very independent and I was like hey if I'm in this relationship it's because I choose to be in this relationship whether it's business or personal I say it's I want to not because I need to I feel panicky when I feel like I like have to rely on somebody like I'm like I can't get out I can't get out like like, I I don't do well in that kind of situation well and I feel I mean I'll talk as a single woman of 30 and I feel that also kind of goes but it's hard when you're dating because then it's like I mean I don't I don't need you to provide for me I buy my own fucking shit I make my own money I have my own career my passions my my like ha ah. yeah I was gonna say I got married super young I got married at 20 oh my and God. I know I, fake I, ID at 20. <laughs> I met Garrett at 18 we got, I got married when I was 20 he's seven years older than me and I didn't need him but I expected him to like provide for me you know yeah. what I mean I was like oh I'll do hair and it's kind of fun but like I, I never even thought I could use hair as a tool to give me the su- success I've had with it today, like where mm-hmm. I'm at today, right? And I just remember like thinking like, oh, he'll take care of me. But then when he couldn't, I was like, well, this is getting sticky. This is not going <laughs> to, this isn't going to work out. This is fucked, isn't it? This is, and I got two kids. All right, Danielle, it's on you. And I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I really, I really grew up in my 30s, I would say. I mean, I mean, I'm there now. So. I had two kids in my 20s, and I'm like, what am I doing? And then in my 30s, I'm like, okay, grown-up Danielle, come on, let's make I, this work. I can't imagine having two children right now being married. I, <laughs> Yeah, I know. I had two kids by the time I was your age. Well, maybe it's also because my dog pooped on the carpet yesterday and then stepped in it and drug it everywhere, so I was up until 12.15 cleaning it. <laughs> I was like, you little bitch, you, you, you're you, real fucking cute, and I love you, but damn you. Oh. I, can't, I can't imagine having kids on top of it. Yeah, it's stressful. Mm-hmm. But even... <laughs> There are some days when I call you and all I hear is, ah! and literally, like, you know what? And I'm like trying to have a conversation. Every mom can appreciate this. And, and Ani will be like, do you want me to call you back? I'm like, we're fine. Shut up, kids. We're fine. Keep going. Keep I'm going. Like, I'm just going to talk a little yeah, louder. We, than- moms, we don't notice that. We just like tune it out. And like sometimes we'll be like, stop doing that. Don't hit your sister. Shut up. Okay. What were you saying? Sorry. Where were we at? Yeah. I really think we should do that ad. Yeah. No, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Did you get those ads out? That's great. Bailey. Shh, shh, shh. I have to tell you this funny story. I'm just going to tell it to y'all to podcast oh, okay it's so funny i'm excited i know it's so funny so i have a 13 year old daughter and i there's this girl i follow on instagram she posts the funny i can't remember her name but she posts the funniest stuff about teenage life and it's like so dramatic and i realized like that's real like teenage daughters are nuts <laughs> so yesterday like they didn't have school yesterday and i asked my daughter who's 13 i'm like hey do you want me to take you to starbucks you know and she's like sure and I'm, she's like let me just get ready i come up in her room she's got like all the lights out with her little like glowy lights on and she's in these <laughs> tall platform doc martens boots she's got a little tennis skirt on and like a cute little like band sweater whatever and then I look at her and she's got black lipstick on Oh, and I'm Bailey? like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm what? like, and she's like, hi, mom. And I'm like, oh, do you want to go to Starbucks? She goes, yeah. And I, I look at her and I go, okay, wash your lipstick off. And, she, and she's like, oh, what do you mean? I think it looks cute. You don't think I look cute? I'm not cute. I'm not going. I'm like, no, just like, I, I, I yeah. I'm like, it's I want aggressive. Wanna. You're 13. I know. He's like, well, you just, you know, you're, you got black lipstick on. So then I'm like, she's like, fine, I'll wash it off. Like 10 minutes later, I come up. I'm like, are you ready? She's like, no, I had to change my whole outfit. I was like, I just asked you to wipe off your lipstick. Like it was like, sorry. like, and, and moments like that happen every day with a teenager. I will tell you, literally, I'll be like, the she, wind changed direction. She couldn't wear the outfit without no, the lipstick. No. And then I was the bad guy, and then she swore at me a few times, and then I went to Starbucks by myself. <laughs> I don't know why I felt like I needed to share that story with you guys, well, but that you know what? Is... I'm feeling pretty good about the poop I had to yeah, clean up I was right like, now. So you can talk about your dog shit, but my daughter. <laughs> Woo, there's some days you I'm have like, some daughter shit you're dealing with. Yeah, I sometimes I just laugh, and I'm like, 
okay, we'll see you in a couple hours. Like, there's nothing to say. Man, but, but yeah. she's has she has she has she reached womanhood yet? Yeah, she oh, has. And oh. it, it's actually that time of the month. Oh. So <laughs> it's like, yeah. So it's Shark Week. I see. Yeah, sure. okay. I mean, I think I'm crazy <laughs> until you have a 13 year old daughter and it's that time of the week, and you're like, okay, let's put the gloves on, guys. <laughs> 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 it's rough but anyways back to the this show this podcast went sideways, it went sideways. It's, it's great but you know what but, that's also real but it's also real life like those yeah. are just things that oh, happen I know but even but you know what though and I feel like Bailey she'll come around I feel like the I communication know. is really great in your family and that's something so important like yeah even with her, kind of like, kind of with our topic as well, though, like, we always say, like, you can't save people, but you can lead them. Right. Like, you can show them what needs to be done, and you can show her what needs to be done, but at the end of the day, like, you can't hold I have somebody's to hand. Yeah, and I always think I'm fucking up as a mom, and then I'm like, you know what, Danielle, the only thing you can do is try to lead by example and course correct along the way. I'm like, there's literally no roadmap for this. So there's no manual on children, There's huh? no <laughs> manual, especially on Bailey. There's no manual. <laughs> she's like, she's like the craziest combination of Garrett and I. Like, she so she but took the crazy of both of us. She you. took the crazy of both of us. I'm like, that's that's either going to be a train wreck or a real success. You know, I feel like I feel like she'll come around. Yeah, I think she'll too. I feel like she'll. Well, you know what they say? They say your kids are worse than you were. So that's, I was a little asshole. That's, well, I was like a quiet asshole though. She's well, she's Garrett's she's child. So Garrett, she's a loud so asshole. She's a loud <laughs> asshole. <laughs> but I love her. She's cute. I love her. She's a good fucking. She's kid, a good man. kid. She's a sweetheart. She just has her crazy menstrual moments so. <laughs> <laughs> I would like the podcast to be named that's name, crazy menstrual moments <laughs> uh, but um, anyway go, yes. going back to just like communication because like anytime whether it's in business or relationships when I'm like how did that go south it's always because of lack of communication somewhere somewhere with two well, people and I feel like it's because we can keep going both ways business and personal mm-hmm. it's almost like standards and non-negotiables and right. what you expect like if you're in a relationship and you expect the man to take out the trash like every week right. but you don't make that clear and then you're like you didn't take out the trash and he's like what well, the fuck I didn't you didn't even tell didn't me even know. to do yeah. it yeah. you know even things like that or with your assistant if you don't tell them like hey I need you to fold the towels this way or pick this up and they don't do it you're gonna be like um here's yeah. your write up you didn't do it but it's like you right. didn't Teach you him, were not you didn't communicate it. Yeah. Yes. And I feel that's where things go sideways. And I really feel that because we hear a lot from artists. They're like, oh, my gosh, but my assistant isn't. But my boyfriend isn't. But my mm-hmm. husband. But this, but that. And I'm like, well, did you talk to him? Oh, no. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. So you're trying to drag them along on a vision, on a path. But you in didn't a relationship, communicate your vision. But you didn't fucking tell them shit. You yeah. could be dragging them through mud. And that's why they're like not following you. I think it's hard too to have those tough conversations, though. I think women, we tend to avoid conflict and just like shove our feelings under the rug until one day like the, the one piece of trash didn't get taken out and you're like <gasps> you're dead to me I can't believe it and you're it's a like, terrible Whoa, husband <laughs> you're a terrible human and it's like but and so for me because I feel like I used to be more like that I actually try to communicate quicker before it snowballs into this big thing and then I like mm-hmm. blow up well and I feel that you and I have become very good at that because yeah like when I came here it's it's like it was like not awkward and weird but it's like you're like try to like figure each other out yeah. do you know what I mean and even inside of that I feel like we really learned how to speak even if it's like Danielle you said this and it hurt my feelings like mm-hmm. I didn't like that or you're like Ani you should have told me this and I'm like ah you're right whatever it is I feel that because our communication there's never like an awkward talk it's yeah. just like <clears throat> hey let's have a conversation on this I feel has made it really great that also it's not like well then there's no weird energy yeah and I feel like you're not trying to pick up like slack on my end because there isn't but I'm not trying to pick up slack on your end because there also isn't but it's almost like we're both leading together yeah and that's what makes things work so well I feel like you and I've gotten to this place where we can volley back and forth and I'm like is this taken care of is this taken care of is this taken care of and we can kind of like move at our own pace but then if something is off it's just simple as like hey did this get done why didn't it get done and then Mm -hmm. I always you're good at it too but I'm always like fuck that's on me like I should have communicated that Mm -hmm. earlier I felt I I knew I should have and I didn't but like how do we course correct and get to like how do we make this better? Like even down to our next virtual event. Yeah. The whole time I'm like thinking like, I want the whole team here and I didn't communicate that. Mm -hmm. And then we were so busy. And then I finally was like, Hey, let's get the whole team here. And you're like, well, Danielle, it's it's, in 10 days. (laughs) It's in 10 days. And I'm like, make magic happen. And you're like, I don't know if we can do that. Uh, And so now I'm like, ah, that's on me because I didn't communicate what I wanted when I, when that came up. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just, I think it's hard. It's not only like I get busy, but it's also like, you just think that eventually like going back to like assistance, you're like, oh, well, they'll figure it out. You know what I mean? Like you're like, I'm, I'm showing them I'm leading by example, but sometimes not just leading by example gets it done. You actually have to specifically communicate what you want done. Like I got to this place with assistance where I was like, I felt like you could throw any assistant at me. And I was like, yeah, they were great. And everyone be like, 
like, you thought she was great? I don't know if I liked her. And I'm like, but I have, I've had some not so great assistants. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten very good at like, hey, I want you to sweep up that hair right now. Hey, I want you to hold it. Like I direct the whole entire time instead of just like hoping they do stuff. And it's so funny now when I work with an assistant and they jump in without me saying anything, I'm like, I tell them, I'm like, oh, I don't need you to do that. (laughs) <laughs> like, like literally I've had assistants like jump in and I'm like why are you don't paint that don't, I didn't ask you to section the hair don't paint that like I yeah. think I come across a little bit um, scary sometimes but I <laughs> don't have time to be like can you please do this have and you met do- me yeah I know <laughs> you you're actually me? scarier than I am and I think <laughs> I think both of us don't mean to come across that way, but we're like, we have to get things done. But but that's why I'm always like, Ani, your tone was kind of mean. And you'll be like, I didn't even notice that. And, and immediately, <laughs> and I also have no problem being like, hey, you know what? I, I'm sorry if it came <laughs> off as mean. Here's what I was doing in yeah. the moment. Here's where my mind was at. Right. And I feel like that's also important as well. Like That's hard in relationships because sometimes I'll, and Garrett does the same thing to me. And we'll be, we'll be so consumed with work stuff that we bring that like mentality home. And we're ha- trying to have a conversation, but we're still su- stuck in work. <laughs> life you know what I mean and then we kind of like yeah and then we like kind of trigger each other so I have to tell him sometimes like when I get home I have to be like hey or I'll have to call him out on it. I'm like I you're still in work mind right now we cannot talk about this right now mm-hmm. I'm like because you're getting mad over like the dumbest thing but I know it's not because you're mad at me or you're mad at Bailey or you're mad at the kids mm-hmm. like you're stuck in work land so do you need to like go get some ice cream go get a break like what do you need to do yeah. and he'll be like okay that actually happened to me the other day I was going on a date and but when it was like after an event and mm-hmm. after an event you're fucking like you're amped like right. I'm so hyped up that by the time I got home I'm like ha, ha, like running around I'm still working I'm doing this and it took me I think almost 45 minutes to like calm down enough right. to be like okay work mode aside right. now you can like chill and do like normal people things but that is very and I feel but even with that comes communication right. of mm-hmm. hey this is how I am. I like, need a minute. Yes, yeah. I just need a minute. And that's why we always, whenever we're talking to our students inside of the academy, <clears throat> we have such a strong stance on you need to be a leader. Because mm-hmm. even, let's say, if you go through and you talk to your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your significant other and you're like, you know, this is really like what I want in life. I want, if you're like, I want marriage and I want kids and dogs or wh- white picket fence, whatever it is you yeah. want. If you're not clear about that and then years down the road, you're like, what do you mean you don't want that? But you know what else too? Like if they like never want that and then you're like, hey, this is what I want and they never want that. I feel like it's like, what do you do? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, f- in, I feel in those instances, it's really hard. But if your paths don't align, yeah. because I'm also a firm believer if someone's like, hey, I don't ever want kids kids yeah don't be that don't be that crazy lady that's like i'll change his mind yeah i'll change you i know you want but that's do you want that though like is that actually winning for you i know and it's very hard to like (laughs) almost like cut the cord right and be like hey you know what thank you for everything unfortunately this doesn't i have like a good friend who's like in a, a similar situation and like she loves this guy and she wants to marry him and but he doesn't want kids but she doesn't even know if she wants kids but she just wants a commitment and he doesn't know and i'm like what do you, I'm like, are you willing, what are your negotiables? That's what I say. I'm mm-hmm. like, what are you, what are your negotiables? She's like, I just want a commitment. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, it, I'm like, that's, then you probably need to put come, some kind of like a time frame on that for yourself. You know what I mean? Do you know, I, so I started these two different <laughs> journals by this guy. One of them is actually about like your mindset and the other is actually for single people, which has mm-hmm. been very cool. And part of what he was saying, he's like, you know, when you go into a relationship and I feel you need to think about this in business and personal, but he was talking about personal and he's like, you go into a relationship and you're like, I just want to be happy I just want to be loved I just want to laugh and he's like but is that really what you want right like is that your we always say is that your why why are you dating and for him he was like for me I date because I want to find someone who push who makes me a better Mm, person right the person who pushes me he goes so when I go on dates and I sit there I think I'm like would she make me a better person if Mm -hmm. the answer is no he's like it's very easy for me to be like hey I'm so sorry like it just wasn't there I think I'm probably the same way I think I would get like I, like the infatuation, but then I just get bored. I'd be like, uh, mm-hmm. like there's nothing. You don't push me. Like there's no, the it's yes. gone. You know what I mean? And I feel, and the same really goes for business. If you're hiring someone just to hire because you're desperate, that's actually going to end up costing you more in the long run. Mm-hmm. Like you cannot save people that are not on your team. And I see feel your like my, my team members, like you guys all push me like, cause you guys are working a hundred yeah. miles an hour too. So then it puts the pressure on me. So I'm like, okay, they believe in my vision. Like man, well, you're right. steering the boat and <laughs> yeah. we're rowing yeah. like motherfuckers. I, I to remind myself that like sometimes I'll be like why didn't Ani get this done then I'm like 
cheer company. I'm like, oh, fuck me. Okay. okay. Shit, I should have done yeah. this. So I'm like, okay. And sometimes I forget. I'm like, I'm the rudder. Like, yes. you guys are like my 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 rowers. I'm like, okay, if, if this is taking a hard left, that's on me. Mm-hmm. So I have to be in like very good communication with my team members because I know you guys are like doing a lot of stuff, but then I have to check in and do like weekly meetings with you guys Absolutely. all the time to be like, okay, hey, where are we at? Where do we need a course correct? So And again, that just comes back to me taking that responsibility and that accountability and understanding like that's how a good team works together. And that's also good leadership (laughs) and communication because you cannot you look if your business is fucking up, you did it. Like, I'm so sorry. And I hate I hate to be like that guy, but it is it's based (laughs) on like your most likely your communication was poor. It was poor with your staff. It was poor with your clients. And there could be that you weren't even clear with yourself on what you wanted. Right. So there was no way for you to even give yourself a chance to show up as a leader and show people the path and have them come with you instead of you dragging them by Mm -hmm. their fucking ankles in the mud because you were not clear yourself. I know. I always like I wasn't always that way. Like I'd always be like, well, it's his fault or her fault Mm -hmm. or whatever. It's their fault. And then I realized I'm like, if I can't take some accountability for everything because everybody plays a role inside of that relationship even if somebody else is at fault and you think they're at fault you still played a role inside of that relationship and so I'm always like okay so that happened yeah (laughs) so what are we gonna do well even the other day you and I were having a conversation about like something else and you were like you know what that's a decision I made you're like that's on me and I said no no hold up Danielle I go that isn't just a decision you made I backed you up a hundred percent I agreed with you in this decision so actually it's a decision that we both made right and we were both well wrong yeah. And hey, guess what? We fucking learned from it and it gave us more insights. But and I think it's you have to you can't try to be like right all the time. Yeah. I think that's actually why we've grown as a company because we we it's like we I thought we, you were about to say a couple. I'm like, so we've know. grown as a couple on <laughs> I know we're work wives, but wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of. But like if you think about it, I think we're we're like we're kinda hard on ourselves, but we're always willing to be like Okay, well, we screwed up. So, yeah. And we're willing to course correct instead of like just like take a left. We actually are like, well, how do we make sure that this doesn't happen again? You can't be so stuck in your fucking ego and demanding to be right. And that goes for business partnerships. It goes for your staff. It goes with your clients. And it goes in personal relationships. Like, if you fuck up, just own up to it. Don't, and I feel like don't take yourself to the dark place of being like, I'm the worst person. (laughs) My life is garbage. Everything's garbage. I quit. Mm -hmm. Don't do that either. Just be like, you know what? Yes, I fucked up. I made a mistake. I'm now going to fix it. I hate living in this weird guilty place. So, like, if I ever feel like I fucked up, I, like in good conscience like I don't tell me a secret I cannot keep it like I literally would be like I did this I'm feeling so guilty I can't handle it like I literally because like I can't I can't live like live in guilt like it drives me crazy so I'm willing to have those tough conversations even though I'm like the biggest conflict avoider you've probably ever met I also hate living in guilt even more so it forces me to communicate because I hate that feeling yes and then if you think think in your head that someone is upset with you over something that you know you did wrong that other person like let's say like I thought you were mad at me for, you, I did something and I thought yeah. you were mad even if you weren't you could be like oh Ani yeah no I don't like that and I'd be like she doesn't like it oh yeah. my god because you're she knows, living in oh, some story because you're yeah. so like <laughs> fucked up in your own head and you're so stressed that all of a sudden it's like when you don't like someone and you're like look at that bitch eating that cracker it's like she's just eating a cracker leave her yeah. alone but that's what it is I don't do guilt either I wouldn't rather I be like hey okay you know what I did this that yeah. was I that happened once I sent like a weird email or something I did I like didn't check one box and you're like oh, okay this that and I'm like but Danielle I also need to tell you that I sent this email and this is what happened and this was the outcome and I'm gonna fix it and I was like oh I go, okay. it'll never happen again and you're like oh, okay okay all you're right like, is anything bad happening because like, then no. I would have come and had a conversation with you and you'd been all weird with me and I'd be like what's wrong with Ani <laughs> and I would have had no idea but you were living in your own story of that little like guilt pocket so but yeah. I also think being honest, but you know what? That's something that makes it work because you know, I'm not going to keep fucking secrets. And even if like, <laughs> I don't tell you something, it was never meant to be like a secret. It's right. I probably just forgot or right. I, or I told you and you didn't remember. That's like, true. I have too many things going on. So half the time you'll be like, I told you that. Remember like 10 times? I'm like, I don't, I don't You're remember. You're like, no, no, no. no so guys, remember. really what we wanted you to get from this is take a look at how you're showing up in your life and maybe split it up. Look at it. If you own a business as a business partner, if you're an artist as like the lead artist, if you have assistants as like their boss, and then also in your personal relationships and really think like, have I been so, so clear on my communication that everybody knows like, here's what's important to me. 
here are my non-negotiables. Here's my path. Here's my vision for myself, for my life, for the business. And if you haven't been that clear, mm-hmm. then there's a chance you're just trying to like save people and, and drag and them. And oftentimes when you're really clear with your vision, it allows people that don't align with your vision to choose out. Yes. It's not like you're like, you're dead to me. You're fired. Like you realize that you guys are on totally, 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 different, totally different paths. And it kind of gets to this place where like I've had to let people go. And I literally the conversation is not like you're dead to me. I'm like, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Because here's how you're showing up. Here's where I'm going. Here's my non-negotiable, non-negotiables. What do you want in this moment right now? And it really opens up the door and the window for someone to have that kind of communication and realize like, hey, this wasn't time lost. Mm-hmm. This was relevancy. Like this was experience gained. Absolutely. But now we need to go in separate directions and that's okay. And I think that that's when you can come to a really like peaceful place with yourself where you're not having like an angry separation with like work members or assistants or, wh- or whoever or it is. Or even like relationships, yeah. all of it. Yes. And that's why it's just so important that first you have to be clear with yourself mm-hmm. because if you're living in a place of chaos where you're like, I, I don't know. And I've even seen some people, some artists before, they're like, no, no, I know exactly what my vision is. And I'm like, really? Because you, I'm on the outside looking in mm-hmm. and you're a fucking disaster. Yeah. Like you need to get it together and you stop might telling have your yourself. vision, but you're, you're like 20 steps ahead. Like, yeah. You're, you, you're a hot mess. Yeah. You got to start here with your vision and then <laughs> take it there. You know what I mean? And I, it's even for me, I'm like, I have my vision of where I want to go, but it's like day by day. I'm like, okay. It changes. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Like literally, like we'll try to plan things out. I mean, think about 2020. We tried to plan out this whole year and we had to course correct everything. And so now we're even like going into 2021 trying to plan it. And I'm like, you know what? The best I can do is as a business owner is have clear communication and set like small goals and reach towards every small goal. And then over time, like you've seen so much progression in yourself because you're not just like, wow, that's where I'm going to go. But where do I start? But where do I go? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, okay, well, here's the next step that I can see in front of my face. So I'm going to go there because that's what I think women do. I think they literally they're like, there's too many steps in between. I don't know where I start. So I'm not going to do anything. And I'm like, well, what's the first thing you need to do? And it's like sometimes the simplest things. It's like, hey, um, next month I'm going to cut out haircuts. Okay, next month I'm going to fire this assistant. Okay, like every little thing will help get you towards your goals. So you guys. We're coming to the end of our podcast. This was kind of like all over the place, but I feel like it was good. I liked it. I liked it. I was like, squ- we're a little bit like um, a squirrel. Gonna, squirrel. No, we're a little bit like a, a event fog. <laughs> I feel loopy some yeah, days. Yeah, some days. I think it's just because we had such like a long week and I can't, I like literally this morning I've been like laughing and I'm like, I think I'm like in a high. Like I'm kind of like, oh, so much work and it's Friday. Yay, it's a weekend. So anyways, look for a podcast every Tuesday. I actually was impressed with how many students listen to our podcast. <gasps> I loved it. And I if you're it. listening to this and there's a topic that you want us to talk about or even yeah. like a prop, so like if you're having a problem and you want help with it, send us a DM on Instagram yeah. or whatever it is. We would we'll be happy to help. I'm going to do a post like that. I'm going to I'm going to post when I post this podcast, I'm going to say what topics do you want to hear about Ooh, and see what people say. Let's go spicy. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you for listening. Um, if you want more information on all of our classes, you can go to bigmoneystylist.com, enter your email, and we will be updating you as soon as we have the 2021 Ooh. schedule, which is coming up. It's going to be good very soon. All right. Bye. See ya.